Hey everyone, it's Kylie from Pained Wing. I just got back from a trip from Florida, and while I was there, I saw so many different types of birds. I visited a few different parks and went to a nature sanctuary, where I was able to get some footage and take some pictures for references. In this video, I'll be showing some of the footage from my trip, and then I'll create some paintings inspired by it. The first bird that I'm painting is a purple gallinule. I didn't get any great footage of this bird, but I did want to paint one because they're really pretty. They have a purpley blue body, and then they have a bright yellow and red bill. I'm painting this piece on 12 by 16 inch paper. I've been working on a number of large pieces for an upcoming sale, so I've been wanting to create a few smaller pieces. I also just recently accepted a book deal with a publisher, which I'm really excited about, but equally nervous about as well. The book is going to be a how-to book, focusing on how to paint animals with watercolors. It's still in the early stages of things, but once I get further along, I'll share more. I am really excited to work on some of these personal paintings though. Since being a full-time artist, a lot of my paintings are usually for tutorials or for exhibitions or sales, which isn't a bad thing, but it means I'm catering my art towards a certain audience versus what I really want to work on. So I'm trying to squeeze in some personal paintings.
I often get asked how long it takes me to complete my paintings. On average, it takes me as little as 20 minutes to three hours. I don't personally like spending a lot of time on paintings. I like to create something and then move on. And other than the detailed parts of my paintings, the loose parts are pretty quick, and if I spend too much time on them, I risk overworking them. I've been advised before to not tell people how long it takes me to complete a painting, that it will somehow devalue my work, but I don't know, seems like a strange thing to lie about. Alright, so this one's done. I had a lot of fun painting him. His legs are a little weird, so I did simplify them. Now I'll be painting a brown pelican. I took this photo myself. I don't often use my own reference photos. I wish I did, but I don't leave my house enough, and I'm not the best at photography. But it is something I'd like to do more in my practice. This pelican has some really pretty pastel green, blue, and yellows on its beak. Someone asked me the other day why I often paint the beaks and eyes first, and to be honest, I don't really have a particular reason why. It really just boils down to personal preference. I like to go from tight to loose. It's a lot easier for me. I think it also just feels more natural to go from left to right and top to bottom. There isn't always a right or wrong way to do things when it comes to art, and I think that's what's so great about it. That's probably a debatable opinion, but that's how I feel. I think what matters is what your intention is while painting. What are you trying to convey through your art? How do you want your viewers to feel? How do you feel about it? I think that's what matters more. I get comments almost daily telling my paintings are incorrect because I don't paint backgrounds or they look lazy or unfinished. But it's kind of funny because like that's how I'm intentionally painting. But that probably just comes with the territory of sharing your work in public and online. And I hope none of you get discouraged from sharing your artwork. All right, I'm gonna take a break from rambling and continue painting this pelican. All right, and the pelican is done. Next, I'll be moving on to a white ibis. These guys were super funny. When we went to the nature sanctuary, they'd follow you around begging for food. I often get asked what brushes I use to create small details. These are Princeton Aquali brushes. I do like them for small details, but I do replace them quite often, about every other month or every two months, at least for the size of this three over zero and five over zero. I will probably have this ibis on Patreon as a tutorial later. I am still trying to get caught up on my video tutorials. They take quite a bit of time to make. I really enjoy painting white birds though. The thing with white is that it's never actually truly white. I try to mix in other colors in. I'll probably mix in some blues and pinks on the body. That will help tie in the color of the eye and the beak. So here I'm starting with a light gray and then I'll be adding some blue.
and here I'm using that peachy pink color I mixed up for the beak. I'm just going to have the feet kind of fade off here. I want the painting to feel very light and airy. I'm adding some extra water for texture and then this piece will be complete. For the next painting, I just created a short reel for the process instead of adding it to this video. I painted a black crowned night heron. There were the birds with the really intense red eyes from my video in the beginning. These birds were so still and almost statue-like. I'm really enjoying the simplicity of this piece. I painted all these paintings in one day, and I don't know if I recommend painting that much. My back has been screaming at me all weekend. If you got to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. I'm not sure if this was boring or interesting, but either way, I hope you have a great rest of your day.